Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today sees the return of an old favourite to the channel. This puzzle on screen is by none other than Rocky Rower, the American math teacher. See, I said math incorrectly there. Um, but yeah, we've got the American math teacher with line of sight. And this puzzle has an extraordinary 100% rating on Logic Masters Germany and only three stars out of five for difficulty. So it's been recommended to us a few times over the last couple of days. And I'm hoping we might be in for, you know, less of a monster puzzle than I've had to deal with uh, on some days over the last couple of weeks or so. Uh, and we'll get to the rules of this one, which are interesting uh, uh, in a couple of minutes time. Um, before we do that, I need to tell you, it's the 1st of February. And that means if you're a patron of the channel over on Patreon, we have released our patron reward for the new month. And what we've done is we've created a Sudoku hunt, which we're calling quite approachable Sudoku hunt, uh, with the idea being that the puzzles therein are slightly easier than some of the puzzles that you've had to deal with over the last month or two, because we had the pyramid puzzle hunt, which was which was fabulous, but also it did have some difficult puzzles in it. And then Peter C. Hayward's Star Wars Sudoku hunt, which was also full of great puzzles, but that was rock hard. So um, this one, it should be approachable for everybody. So we hope we're gonna get lots and lots of correct solutions. If you can get us the correct solution by the 20th of February, you'll be in with a chance of winning a prize. So do have a go. Um, now, what else did I, I notice last night? Look, look who's produced a new puzzle. Vista Mafel, Roman Whispers. Already got a whopping high rating, as you'd of course expect. A very minimalistic grid, and I am delighted to tell you. I am delighted to tell you that Pencil Mark seems to have shied away from this one. There's been no early video from him solving Roman Whispers yet, and I'm thinking that's because this one has four stars out of five for difficulty, so he's less minded to just crack on with it. Um, now, I, I will certainly have, try and have a go at this in the next day or two, so keep an eye on the channel if you want to see me have a go at another Fistamafel puzzle. Also, if you're a patron, I have now released, it should be it should be out by now, my solve of um, Fistamafel's one star out of five puzzle that he published recently over on Logic Masters Germany. So Mark did a solve of that one, which is the thing I'm complaining about. But now my solve is also up there too. So have a look at that if you've not had a chance to do the puzzle. Now, all that said and done, let's get on with Line of Sight by Rocky Rower, and I shall read you the rules. And you might be wondering, this looks a really small grid. It is. It's a seven by seven today, which is very unusual. And the rules are as follows. Fill each row, column and seven cell region with the digits one to seven once each. So far, so good. The boundaries of the regions must be determined. Boo. Um, clues in the grid indicate some of the cells. Oh, hang on. I've got to read this more carefully. Clues in the grid indicate some of the cells that can see at least two cells in its same region, both horizontally and vertically. So I think that's saying that this clue here is is cluing something about its column. It's saying it can see at least two cells in its column and at least two cells in its row. Every digit it sees horizontally, including itself, is summed. And every digit it sees vertically, including itself, is summed. And these sums have been multiplied together to give the clue. Okay then. Hmm. Region boundaries stop the line of sight. Good grief. So, what does this mean? I think that means, let's just have a think about this 160 for a moment. Rocky Row has been kind enough to give us some examples as well, which we'll certainly work through. But let's just think about this 160. That's saying there are some digits vertically, which could be above or below it or both. There's a string of digits. Let's say that they're those digits. And there's a string of digits horizontally. Let's say it's those digits. And these digits would all be part of the same region, such that the vertical digits will add up to a number, which I suppose must be a, um, a factor of 160. These three digits will add up to a number, which again must be a factor of 160. And when you multiply the orange digits, the sum of the orange digits by the sum of the blue digits, you must get 160. 
That is completely and utterly bonkers. Um, anyway, let's let's read the examples. And actually, I've got an example that Rocky Row has provided here as well. Um, so let me just try and make that look a bit prettier. Let's pull that down so you can see it. Um, there we go. So it's example five by five puzzle. Uh, E.g. a cell with a value of 49, and we have got one of those, look, must be a product of 7 times 7. Uh, must it? Yeah, I suppose so. Okay, that's the prime factors of 49. So, uh, so the cell containing that clue must be able to be part of a sum horizontally to 7 as well as to vertically to 7. Yes, that makes sense. And we can see in, in the correct answer, look, there's 1, 4 and 2 in the horizontal direction, so they do add up to 7, and 4 and 3 vertically, they add up to 7, and 7 times 7 is 49, I see. Uh, what else does it say? It says, e.g. 2, a cell with a value of 12, which we don't have here, is the smallest clue possible and could be made of a 1, 2 in one direction and a 1, 3 in the other direction. So a 1, 2 in one direction. Oh, I see which, because they add up to 3 and 1 and 3 add up to 4. I see, yes, okay. And then, so if, if, if the cells were arranged like this, the, the clue given here would be 1 plus 2 is 3, so it would be 3 times 1 plus 3 is 4 which equal 12. These are the things you get to learn on cracking the cryptic. So this is what we have to do. How can this be three stars out of five for difficulty? It sounds very, very difficult. Uh, anyway, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking and see how we do this. So I can see, well, I can see several of these clues are quite interesting in terms of their actual Numbers, 256 is 16 squared, 121 is 11 squared, 125, isn't that 5 times 5? Yeah, it's 5 times 5 times 5. These two are a bit more bleh, and that one is big. Um, what are the prime factors of 300? Let's actually try and work this out. So it's going to be 2 times, oh, Yes, okay, it's 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 5. That's interesting. Uh, what does that mean? 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 5. Does that mean, because a 5 is repeating, I've got to put 5 in this cell? Hang on, I've got to think about the way the rules work again. We've got to add digits here and add digits here. And depending on how many digits we're adding, we're going to get two. Ah, okay. So I need... No, so what I've said there is nonsense, isn't it? That's absolute nonsense. It doesn't mean I've got to have five in the corner. No, okay. Right, I think we're going to need the secret here. And the secret has changed today. The secret, so we've got a new secret. Because the secret today... It's not 45, is it? It's 28. And that's because all the digits 1 to 7, if you add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7, you get 28. So that means that no multiplier here. This, well, what it means is this can't be 10 times 30. Because if this, if this clue, this 300 clue, was made up of 10 times 30, then in one direction or another, we would have to be able to sum digits to 30. But the most we could add is if we had a whole row of the Sudoku, we'd only get to 28. So this is not 10 times 30. The problem is, though, how do we actually get a handle on what it is? I keep coming back in my brain to the fact it's got two fives in it as its prime factors. Um, so I get, right, okay, here's one way of thinking about it. It's either going to be, therefore, what, it's either going to be that one of the limbs is either 25, or in fact, it would have to be 25, it can't be a multiple of 25. So either one of the limbs is 25, or both limbs must be themselves divisible by 5. Because we know that 5 is, is, appears twice in the list of prime factors of 300. So 25 
would give us we'd be left with 3 times 2 times 2 which is 12 right so that makes sense okay so 25 times 12 is 300 so is that possible 12 would no 12 could be two digits or three digits or four digits but 25 plus 12 is a huge number it's 37 and that blows the secret. No, ah, right. Okay, I now know that this is not 25 times 12. And the reason for that is how could, what's, in fact, perhaps this is a good way of thinking about it. What is the maximum value that any cell clue could have in, in, in a puzzle like this? And that would be if it could see every single digit, wouldn't it? And if the digit that was repeated, that was multiplied twice, was the biggest digit it could be. So if we put 7 here, and then make up the totals um, of the rest of the digits like that, this 300 clue sees all 28. Um, sees all, if we were summing these digits, we would get to 28, but we'd be doubling this one. Because this, in this row, the seven counts twice, and in the col well, the seven counts once, and in the column, the seven counts. So the most you could ever have as a the most you could ever have the factors you're using sum to in this puzzle is twenty-eight plus seven because you're doubling the seven, which is thirty-five. So twenty-five plus twelve is just impossible. There is no way to do it. And in fact, we can probably prove that, can't we? If we try and make 25 in a column, we'd have to do something like that. That's 25. No, it's not. What am I talking about? That's 25. <laughs> Let's actually do maths properly, Simon. That's 25. But that only leaves three to go into this row. And that only adds up to 10 and needs to add up to 12. So we're short. And we're short by two, which is what we expect because we've worked out the maximum that the factors can sum to is 35, not 37. Wow, okay, so 25 times 12 is not possible. 30 times 10 is not possible. So now we need, we can't use a multiple of 25, so we have to split the fives up. This column will, will, will sum to something that is a multiple of five, and this row will sum to something that is a multiple of five. So it's got to be, but it can't be 10 times 30. And we could use 20 times 15, couldn't we? Yes, we could. That would actually work. 20 times 15. In fact, that's the only other thing that it can be. Yes, because as we, if we go beyond 20 times 15, it comes back the other way and we get 15 times... Yeah, we get 15 times 20 and then we get 12 times 25. So yes, we've now... So, it, so this has to be... This has to be 15 times 20. And twenty ah yeah okay yes this is this is good okay ah no hang on oh no, oh it is good what I was about to say there was that this would have to be a three-digit clue and I think it is a three-digit clue but only because I was just wondering if it could overlap with this clue and it can't because that clue is 11 times 11 and that's the only way it could be made up because it's only got two prime it's only well it's only prime factor is 11 so we know that this one is 11 in this direction and then then 11 horizontally so if it overlapped with the 300 clue the horizontal multiplier in both clues would have to be the same number which would have to be 11 and 300 does not divide by 11 exactly um, so that doesn't work so actually just realized i've been 15 minutes of this i've put nothing in the grid but i think we're getting somewhere here because we've worked out now or i've worked out that this clue is 15 times 20 
it can't overlap with this which means and 15 can't be done in two cells in this puzzle because we're looking at digits like seven and six so so this must be a three digit clue going horizontally which we will make purple and this must be uh, this must be how many cells down it's a, it's 20 isn't it so it's at least three cells down so three because we need this to be at least a sum of four cells but i'm now wondering whether if i've got 20 no and if i've got 20 yeah if i've got 20 in this direction and 15 in this direction that adds up to 35 which we know is the absolute maximum that clue that we can do so we know this is a maximum clue in the sense that we know this digit this cell here must see every single digit from one to seven in its region so that cell has to be a seven because we know uh because 35 is 28 which is sort of the triangular number that we know we're operating with here plus the doubled value which is seven so that's seven it needs to see all six other cells so that square is purple and suddenly we have a little bit of a start and this domino is adding up to this is adding up to 15 so this is adding up to eight it's either going to be two six or three five it can't be one seven so one and four have not made an appearance yet in this purple region. So those cells must include one and four. And we can do better than that. We can actually ring that region as being complete. And that means, presumably, we can do something with the 11 clue now, which we know it must be at least two cells vertically and horizontally so it must do that and it can't use seven horizontally now so it's not four seven in this direction but it, ah and it can't be five six in this direction because that will rule out both ways of making eight so this must be this must be three cells at least but it could it could be four cells couldn't it it could be one two three and four and I know it couldn't be one, two, three, and five because that would that would also rule out every single way of making eight in this domino. So this must be three cells. And what do we got here? Fifty. Oh, no, oh, a simpler way of doing this is just to do maths on row one, which is very appropriate in a rocky row puzzle. Those squares add up to fifteen. Those squares, however many there are added up to 11 or will add up to 11 because of the 121 clue 15 and 11 is 26 so there are exactly cells summing to two outside of the purple and the yellow region well there can't be two of those because they both have to be one and that won't work so there must be only one of them and it must be a two and that square is therefore a two it's not in yellow so that square gets a new color it has to get out to join some friends and we are off to the races the two means those two squares are not two six now so they're three five three five have to appear in column one somewhere so now they must be at the bottom so that's a three five pair because they can't repeat in their own cage and those two squares are one two four and six which hopefully will add up to 13 and they do so there we go we've finished no we haven't have we we've done a little bit more we've got 11 here which we now know is 146 um, oh but that okay vertically here we might not have to go any more cells that could be a 7 or a 5 and if that's paired up with 4 or 6 then that would only be a 2 cell region and then they would so this 1 2 1 would only be cluing 4 of the cells of the 7 cell region so the rest of the cells would have to live somewhere else. We've got a two in the one, two, five column now. And the one, two, one, two, five is five times, ah, one, two, five is five times five times five. So the horizontal component here must just be five. Ah, no, that's wrong. 
Oh, bother. This is so complicated. I was just thinking that that means this must be 5 because it couldn't overlap with the 160. But it is a... I don't think that the rule said that the clues couldn't overlap. Hang on, let me just double check this because I, I, this is what was confusing me a bit about row 1. Clues in the grid indicate some of the cells that can see at least two cells in its same region. So if these were in the same region, then these were in the same region. They'd have to have the same factor. So that ah, so the one twenty yes, okay, so yes, for these two to be in the same region, this would have to be a limb of the, the, the one two five clue summing to twenty five, and twenty five is not a factor of one hundred and sixty, so that doesn't work. So the one two five must be five. It must be five horizontally now, and it can't be three cells because you can't make three cells in a Sudoku add up to five. Three cells would be one plus two plus three as a minimum, which add up to six. So this is a horizontal two cell region. And the 25 vertically must be how many cells then? 25, so it could only be five actually. Ah, that's annoying. So we don't know, we actually don't know whether that cell is in the, do we know it's in the, we, well, we know that the, the vertical string, a vertical sum of 25 is using up at least five cells. So we know the middle three cells of this column must be red. What I don't think I know is that whether this is red or not. If that was red, let me just think about that. If, th if these two squares were both red, this ah that's a little bit interesting look if that's how does this column work then because you'd have to leave a three outside of the sum wouldn't you because we'd be saying the vertical strand here sums to 25 and therefore the other cells in this column that were not red would need to sum up to three and they couldn't actually be one and two anymore because we've made the two red so the only way of making cells add up to three therefore would be a lonely three and it would be a three in a corner and that's three in the corner no, well although it might not be three in the corner if this isn't red so that that might be three in the corner that might be three in the spotlight losing its religion but it might not be So if, if this was true, all of these six cells would have to be red. And that would have to be a three, because you'd need to put a three in red. Ah, oh, but that, ah, oh, right, that doesn't work. I understand. Right, this is very, very clever. Right, Rocky Rower, take a bow. Look what's, look what's happening here. If we try and make this red, this two red, we know that the only digit that we cannot have in red in the column now is this three. So in fact, that turns red. And now by Sudoku, this square here must be a three because we need to put a three in red. But we know that this adds up to five. So that has to be a two and that doesn't work. Isn't that beautiful? Right, so that means, that means that, hang on, we've got to do some deletage here. Those three in the middle were definitely red. We don't know, well, we do know that that cell in the corner is not red. So that was not three in the corner. That's green. Green has got to get out. Green has still got to get out. Red is five cells at least because this string is adding up to 25. Ah. Okay, and this cell here is definitely not red because we know that this limb here is, is, is adding up to five. And that doesn't look like it can be yellow or green. Oh, oh no, no, I'm wrong. Sorry, that can be green. I miscounted. One, two, three, four, five, six. That can be green. So we don't know what this is. Uh, okay. Um, 
and what does that mean? So that means that this is adding up to five. I've got to put two in the red region. Well, I do, hang on, I do know that, the, right, what I do know is that that five ends there. Because again, you can't, we can't make a three cell sum add to five. So this is a domino that's adding up to five. I really want to put the two here. I don't know if I can do that. Um, or do we know what that? Oh yeah, we must be able to get this digit by maths again. Yes, okay. Column, column. I was about to say column nine. I'm so used to a Sudoku having nine columns. This is column seven. Those squares add up to 25. 25 plus two is 27. So that square is a one to make the column add up. So now I've not got one or two in red. So that must be one or two. And there must be another digit in red in one of these four squares which is a one or a two, which is whatever this one isn't. But do we have any idea which cell that goes in? I don't think we do. We know these are, we know those add up to five, so that's got to be a three or a four. Uh, I don't know. I don't know whether we can do much more with that knowledge. I know that there's a one, two, yeah, okay. That I know there's a one, two pair. There's a red one, two pair in those five cells. So that square at the top can't be a one. So that's four or six. So we might have to think about these cells now. Two, five, six is 16 times 16. So it's, it's just massively multiplying together twos, isn't it? So it's two, what is it? Two to the eight? I know two to the five is 32. I don't know how I know that, but I've always known that. Um, yeah, so 64, one, yes, yes. So that's two to the eight. So us, ah, yeah, that's, that's actually a really beautiful clue because that means this is just 16 times 16 because if it was anything else, we would have to reduce one side of the 16 by 16 to say be eight and multiply the other side by two to make 32 and 32 is bigger than 28. So it's impossible. So this is 16 by 16 and its horizontal component therefore is 16 and 16 does not divide into 50. So, so that string of digits is the way that the horizontal 256 works. Isn't that beautiful? So the vertical string of 256 or 16 here must be at least three cells. So that's got to be orange. We don't know whether this is orange yet. Um, Let me just think about that. So we've got 16, because 16 and 16 is quite big in terms of the actual size of the digits we're going to have to include here. So hang on, maybe we can rule out some digits from the middle cell here. Yes, I mean, if that was a one, that could never work, could it? Because that would be saying we've got 15 more in the in vertically and 15 more horizontally in order to get to 16 plus 16. But that would mean that these digits I've just highlighted would add up to 31. And we know that there are not 31 cells in orange or 31 cells summing to 31 in orange. So that has to be more than one. So if it was, if it went down to three, we'd be looking, at, that's too many as well, four, I think. Uh, if it was four, you'd have 12 plus 12. You'd have, yeah, four would work if, no, okay, here's a point. Four doesn't work because if, if you do four, no, four does work, four does work. I was worried about isolating this cell in the corner, but I don't think I have to if I go four. If I, oh no, but then I'd have to bump, ah, no, I'm getting confused. If I just go enough vertically, does it work? Maybe it just works. 
I have to go 12. These would have to add to 12. 16. And these would have to add up to 12 as well. Mm, I'm not convinced that's actually possible. Or maybe I can do it in... And I have to, I would have to use all the digits. I think there might be a point here, but it looks... I don't know. I, th I have a feeling this has to be higher than 4. And if I get stuck, I'm going to come back and hone in on this digit. I can't see how to make 12 vertically if I'm not using 4. Oh, maybe that could be a 5 then. I could do 1, 2, 3, 6. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, that was a load of bobbins. Sorry. Um, right, the 50 or the 160 clue. The 160 is much bigger, but the 160 is not in a line with any other clues. And surely that's worse. Because that feels to me like it could overlap with orange. And that feels difficult to understand. What about the 50 then? 50, what are the prime factors? 2, 5, ah, two, this puzzle has lots of 5s in it, doesn't it? So it's 5 times 5 times 2. So it must be there's only one way we can construct that. Because you can't leave the 2 on its own. Because you can't do a double 1 in the row, for example. So it's not 25 times 2, this clue. It must be 5 times 10. And we know that the horizontal component must be going this way because it can't overlap with the 256. So this is a new region. And we will make that region color mm, gray. Now, is this coming this far or is it stopping after 2? That's the next question. Um, if it goes... It's 5 times 10. So if it goes to here, this square, this would have to be a 10 because we couldn't extend it to this, this digit here and make these three squares add up to 5. So if it goes here, this is 10. That's... Uh, it doesn't work. Right, okay, this is lovely. If it goes... If we do this and make those 10 and those 16, that's 26. And to complete the row, we need to put a 2 in that column, which will clash. So this square is simply not in the 50 shape. So does that mean it's in the red shape or is it in that? Sh oh, is it in that shape? That looks quite that looks quite promising, doesn't it? We could have a, a seven cell region going along the bottom there like that. And then this digit by Sudoku would have to be the same as that digit. Um, OK, I don't know is the answer. Ah, but what I do know Yes, but I do know that the horizontal component here must this 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 must add up to five because if this add up, adds up to ten, ten plus sixteen is still twenty six, and those two squares would then have to add up to two, which is even more ludicrous than making that square add up to two. So this this is marking the end of the. 50 clue and it's telling us those squares must therefore add up to 5 so these add up to 5 these add up to so that's 21 here so these have to add up to 7 and this has to be 1 2 3 4 it's either 1 4 or 2 3 and if that was 3 4 I oh, know that oh I was about to say if that was 3 4 there's a 3 4 pair in that column but actually that can't be 3 4 because although these squares here have to add up to 7, this domino adds up to 7. If it's 3, 4, you can't make that domino add up to 5 anymore because this domino is either 4, 1 or 2, 3. So this is either 2, 5 or 1, 6, which means that digit is 1 or 2 and that digit is 5 or 6. Now, does that mean this has to be red? Because don't I need... Yeah, this is lovely. Absolutely lovely. Right, so unfortunately, my beautiful region at the bottom has been marred slightly by the imposition of a red digit here. And that's because if we think about red, it needs a one or it needs both a one and a two in it. Now, the only places that red is allowed to get its ones and twos from is column six. I think I got that right because it can never reach column five. So so the one, two, this must both, these must both be red and to give red the opportunity to have the digits it needs to have. 
So that allows us to complete the red region. This is a, it's really clever, this, this idea, isn't it? It's so original. Uh, oh, no. Okay, so the virtual one, two pair now in those three squares. And the bottom of the grid now, these white squares have the opportunity to join only two regions. All of these squares are either orange or grey. And that can never be orange, because if this was orange, orange would have at least eight cells in it. In fact, orange would have to have loads of cells, because all of those would have to be orange. So that's got to be grey, and if that's grey, its friend is grey. One, two, three, four, now in grey. So if that's grey, all of, yes, all of those would be grey, and grey would be too big, so that's orange. I don't really actually like that being orange, because... Wasn't I running into trouble with putting digits into this square? Uh, now I've got another orange square, which this square doesn't see. Uh, hang on a minute, that's going to be very confusing. So, this, this digit, we know that that's summing to 16, those are summing to 16. And we've also now got to cater for this digit. Ah, it does work, it does work, but I think this square here has to be a 7. Let me show you why. This is absolutely beautiful again, by the way. This digit is actually beautiful, because I think it does fix... I think it fixes this cell. Let me try and see if I can explain why. If this is anything other than 7, Let's make it 6. I know those two squares add up to 10. And I know some combination of digits in this column also add up to 10. So if we were to add up all of the cells we now know are in orange, we have 10 vertically, 10 horizontally, that's 20, plus the 6 itself, that's 26, plus that digit, which is at least a 3, is 29. Now we know that the whole of the orange region adds up to 28, so that doesn't work. We've got to max this out at 7. Now I know those two squares add up to 9. I know some other squares in this column also add up to 9. That's 18. Plus the 7 is 25. And if I make that a 3, that's 28. And that's the only way it will work. So we have to minimise the core. Ah, and that's, yeah, that's 3 in the corner. That's 3 in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um... Oh, this is just beautiful. So that gets me a six here. What Do we know what the sum of those were? We did know what the sum of they were. They had to add up to seven. That's a one. That's a two. These have to add up to... I can't remember. this. Oh, this was five times five. Yeah, that's a three. So that's not a two. This is not... These were adding up to five, so they're not one, four anymore. That's two, three. That square must be a four by Sudoku. Uh, and, and also that those had to add up to nine. Now this clue I think is interesting because we know that we need, oh do we, I was about to say this has to see every other digit, I think it does, 9, that's my gut reaction is that this has to see every other digit but now I'm questioning whether that's true. When I say every other digit, I mean every other digit in in orange. So, for example, this square, could that be orange? If that's orange, no, it can't. It can't be orange it's for exactly the same reason that this had to be a 3. If this is orange, now let's do a count of orange again. We've got 9 here, 9 there, wherever, plus 7, that's 25, plus 3 is 28, plus this digit. Well, that's going to break the orange total. So this does see every other orange digit. Now, we've not put 1, 2. It's only 1, 2, and 6, actually. 
So that's that's definitely become orange, and we don't know about which of these is orange. But we do know that this now can't be orange, so that's got to be grey. Uh, how many regions actually are we have we now identified as being existing? One, two, three, four, five, six regions. And I know that ah, okay, and I know that the 160 clue now can't join orange. Because if it did, this cell would be orange and not seen by this cell, which we've just proved is impossible. So this and this can't be grey, because grey is already of size 6, and if this was grey, it would have to be a size 8. So that is a new region. I'm assuming it can't reach yellow or green. I don't think it can. Right, so that is a new region. And I'd like to know what that square is. I really would. And I do know what that square is, because I've got to put a 2 in the bottom row. And if I've got a 2-3 pair there, I can't put 2 in those squares or that square. 3 is not equal to 2, so that's got to be a 2. And if it's got to be a 2, it can't be grey, so it must be orange. Now these two squares have got to be a 1-6 pair. We've got... Oh! Well, I don't know what we've got there, although I might be able to work it out. But what we have got is a way of completing our grey region now. It needs another cell. It's got to be that one. So that does complete grey. And, and quite interestingly, look, that cell, where does that go in the bottom row? Well, it's got to go there. Because the 2 and the 3 are already placed. So this digit and that digit are the same digit. And what does that mean? So that digit is, is either... Four, this digit is 4, 5, or 7, I think. So that digit is 4, 5, or 7. That's absolutely useless. <laughs> um, oh dear. Ah, ah, but orange is done. I've just noticed. Sorry, I should have seen that immediately. Orange has got all of its cells now. So probably, and reasonably, we have to figure out what's going on with the 160. So the 160 is, what are the prime factors? It's going to be 2, gets us to 82, 2, 2, ooh, it's loads of 2s. In fact, it's all 2s and a 5. That's all it is. Okay. It's all 2s and a 5. So, one of, exactly one of its limbs must be a multiple of five. And therefore, we've got to be a bit careful, haven't we? we if we just do five here, uh, these squares here would have to multiply together to give too many, I'm thinking. Um, yeah, that's going to be a 30. It's going to be over 30, isn't it? Five. Why can't I do that in my head? What's going on in my head? It's, it's, it's gone crazy. 32. 32 doesn't work because we can't make any string of digits that big. So we know that the the multiple is either 10. And it can't. Oh, I see. It's got to. Yes, and we've got to multiply five by an even number. So it's got to be 10 or 20 or 30 or something like that 30 no 30 won't work um what am i talking about by an even number simon so it's got to be t 10 or 20 or 40 40 is obviously nonsense so we've the, the one leg of this is either 10 or 20 so the other leg of it is either 16 or 8. 10 or 20. 10. So it's either 10 times 16 or it's 20 times 8. 
and 16 is more than two digits and 20 is definitely more than two digits. So this string is either adding up to eight or it's adding up to, to 10. It's adding up to eight or it's adding up to 10, which is a bit interesting, isn't it? So if that adds up to eight, it's got to be one seven because it can't be two, six or three, five. If it adds up to 10, it's got to, it can't be one nine. Actually, there's no nines in the puzzle. It's got to be four, six, and it would have to be the four and the six in that order. Ah, okay. So in this row, the question to ask is, oh, I see, where does five go? Where does five go in row five? It could never go in this sum because this sum is adding up to 10 or eight. You can see eight is ruled out with five because of the three and double five doesn't work. So the five goes here and that's a gray. So that goes down here. We get our grays done. Therefore, those two digits have got to be a four, seven pair. And these digits at the bottom are one, four, six and seven with that not being a one and that not being a four. Ah, and in this row, we've still got to put a seven in. So where does the seven go? The seven must go in the sum, which is either adding up to eight or 10. So that's not three, seven. That is a one, seven pair. Beautiful. So the 16 is one, seven. That's a six. That's a one. That's a four. One, seven here. So we know this string of digits is adding up to 20, which we can't, oh, this is so good. We can't do that in three cells. If we do it in three cells, it could only be seven, six and five, which is 18. So it must take all four cells and look what that does to the domino. The white domino now can't join to any other region apart from blue and blue now has seven cells. <laughs> this is ridiculously clever. How is this puzzle only three stars out of five for difficulty? This is not straightforward at all. I know three stars out of five is average, but this is not easy. <laughs> It really isn't. Please tell me. Is this easy? Uh, if this is easy, this is a state Sudoku's got to. It's crazy. Um, um, well, OK, if that's adding up to 20, that can't be a one either. Because that even with seven, six and five, that's only adding up to 19. So that's got to be the seven. That's got to be the one. So that's not one. That's not one. That's therefore a one. Look in the in the hundred. Well, in the eleven that goes across here. That's not a one. How many ones have I got? Loads. I've got to put a one in the bottom row. It's got to go here. Even more than loads now. I've got to put a one in that region. So is that is that all the ones done? It is. OK, well, that's good. I know these three digits are adding up to what was it 13 so 13 and 8 is 21 these are adding up to 7 and then so that must be a 3 4 pair because it can't be 1 6 and it can't be 2 5 and that places 5 at the top of the grid and 3 here so these digits if I've not made an error with my maths have got to be 2 5 and 6 still not quite finished though is it so how do we finish this off this ah okay yeah i was thinking that so this this domino now it does look like it's got to go could be a, no no if it's a two cell domino that's going to be very problematic i've only got two more regions left to fill it has to fill we've got to fill all the white space with just yellow and green aha right so this digit is very interesting well, what region does that belong to? Now, we might, before this was a one, we might have said it could belong to the yellow with this string of digits being one, two, three, and five, adding up to 11. But now it can't. The one's not available. So there's no way of making a four cell sum to 11. So that digit is green. And if that digit is green, how do we attach green to green without isolating any cells that need to be yellow? Well, we're going to have to close in, have to, just hug the boundary. Yellow gets filled in. That is, I think, the delineation done. And we've just got to figure out the Sudoku. 
and possibly um, the other thing I was just wondering about is have we done all of the maths that we're meant to do no well we've not clearly not done the maths on the 11 uh, which I can see is impossible with a six here because that would this domino would add up to five and it can't be one four or two three so that's a four I think that's four that's six these two squares are adding up to seven and they're not one six or three four so that's two five these squares have got to be three seven that's now a three that's a two these two dominoes 5 times 10 is 50, so that's a 7. That's a 6 by Sudoku. That's a 4 by Sudoku. This square is known. It is a 6. This square is known. It is a 4. That's lovely. 4 and 7 go in. 6 and 2 go in. That's a 5 by Sudoku. That's, oh, this is, this is falling. 6, 2, 2, 5. These squares are three, five, and seven. And that one must be known, therefore. So that's three, that's five, that's seven, that's seven, that's three, that's three, that's four. Yay! <laughs> ridiculous. Ridiculous Rocky Rower. Uh, and ridiculously rated by whoever has solved that and just said, well, that was dead simple. Three out of five. My normal fare. Tally ho. And good riddance well not for me um <laughs> that was that was incredibly interesting an absolute workout on our factors you know but we had to do quite a lot of logic there we had to work out how each of the sort of dog legs worked do the maths work out what was and wasn't possible draw all the regions do all the sudoku all for um all for just three out of five difficulty my goodness me my goodness me, the world has become a complicated place, but I hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you had a go because it's a sensational puzzle. And yeah, there'll be more, more Sudoku later on this evening with Mark. So check that video out too. And bye for now. Or if you're Mark, bye for Kate. Thanks for watching.